Now there are more, there are more stresses that might break the surface and they too relate to an ocean probably being uh, beneath. This looks like a complicated diagram, but I'll show you the, the basics of it. This is an exaggerated view of Europa orbiting around Jupiter, looking down from over the North Pole. And uh, Europa is in an eccentric orbit, an egg-shaped orbit, an oval orbit. So it's sometimes closer and sometimes farther from Jupiter. Again, this is way exaggerated so that you can see what's going on. And when Europa is closer, it's stretched out more by Jupiter's gigantic gravity. And when it's farther away, well, it, it contracts a bit. It's not stretched out nearly so much. So as Europa is going around, it's getting stretched outward and then uh, released somewhat, relaxed somewhat. At the same time, it kind of nods back and forth, uh, facing uh, actually kind of in this direction, kind of in this direction as it orbits around. Um, for the astronomers, for the JPLers in the crowd, this is um, libration. It's moving back and forth, and that's because it's in an orbit that's not quite circular. Um, so it's nodding, and it's being pulled back and forth. It's stretching. And if you were to bend a paper clip back and forth for a while, you'd see that it gets hot. There's friction. And when something's bending back and forth, that friction generates heat. So what's going on, because Europa is squeezed in this way, is it's heating up inside. Now, we don't really know where this heat is. It might be in the mantle, like this is, is illustrating. Or that heat might all be generated in the ice shell itself. This is called tidal heating. You might have heard of it, especially in the context of Io. That's why Io is the most volcanically active body in the solar system. And it, Io2 has one of these eccentric orbits. In fact, the orbits of Io and Europa are tied together. It's because of Io and Ganymede, Europa's neighbors, that Europa has this it's eccentric orbit. They're in this orbital dance together. And actually, Callisto's not in that orbital dance, which is why it's kind of a boring moon, at least, as we think. So Europa, there's a reason to think that Europa's interior could be hot could be warm, warm enough to melt liquid water if you go not too far down below the surface, even though the surface itself should be something like minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, about 100 degrees Kelvin. So this orbiting around, um, this orbiting around Europa, sorry, I'm having a slide issue here. Let's see if we can fix that. Whoa, close enough. This orbiting around Jupiter creates stresses too. So getting stretched out, Europa getting stretched out when it's close to Jupiter um, pulls apart the part of the surface that's, that's facing toward and away from Jupiter. So there's tension in this area and in this area. And it's, it pushes together the other areas. But that's just in one place in the orbit when it's closest to Jupiter. It's orbiting around, and this is happening pretty quick. Or, uh, Europa goes around every three and a half days, every 85 hours, it makes an orbit. So these stresses must be changing as Europa orbits. And this is an animation of how the stresses change while Europa orbits around Jupiter. So if you're standing here on the surface, you go through tension, and then compression, and then tension again as Europa's orbiting. So this surface is just getting squeezed and pulled and pushed together just in the time scale of Europa's day, three and a half Earth days, 85 hours. If you're over here on the surface, the stresses are not just changing from compression to tension, but they're rotating around. If you can see that in the, in the back, these little tick marks are actually rotating around. So what would happen if a fracture formed and tried to, and, and was getting pulled apart by these stresses as it formed, as it moved across Europa's surface? Well, this is what we think would happen. It would make one of these strange arcuate features that we saw earlier. 
These things are called cycloids or cycloidal ridges. They were first seen in Voyager images. They weren't seen great then. They were seen at a couple of kilometers per pixel. And, and they stayed mysterious for 20 years until the Galileo spacecraft took more pictures of them, but more important, until smart people thought about how they might form and how they might relate to these changing stresses on Europa. So it was Greg Hoppe and Randy Tufts at the University of Arizona who realized the stresses change direction as Europa orbits around. And they put together this little animation. If you're a fracture and you're try trying to follow that changing stress direction, you can trace out an arc across the surface. And when the surface goes into compression, you just sit there and that fracture kind of rests, waiting for the next European day, making an arc each European day. So again, this is fascinating geologically, but why, what's the big picture? Why do we care? Because these stresses related to the flexing of Europa as it orbits seem to have made geology, seem to have cracked the surface of Europa. If Europa has an ocean, then those stresses can be large. The tides on Europa can be large, about 30 meters or so, 30 yards. But if Europa has no ocean and its ice shell is clamped right to the rocky core, then the tide is only about one meter, about a yard, three feet. So the fact that we see features that seem to be related to the tides, the tides have cracked Europa's shell, tell us that there's probably an ocean down there. Without an ocean, those tides just wouldn't be large enough to do anything to the surface. So Europa's ocean was kind of staring us in the face, evidence of it, for 20 years, but we didn't know how to interpret it. We didn't understand that information. Now, we don't know from the, just these features alone that Europa's ocean is there today, except the magnetometer data says, yeah, it's probably there today, because we don't know how old these are. But then again, the crater data says these are probably formed in the last 50 million years. That ocean probably is there today. So what do these ridges look like close up, or any of Europa's ridges? We saw a little bit of that before, these double ridges. Whoops, my computer is having issues there. There we go. These double ridges that stretch across the surface. Galileo was able to take not just regional views, but close-up views. And here we're zooming into one of those mosaics of images from Galileo, colorized by some lower resolution data, to see what these ridges look like close up. Again, it's amazing. There are these valleys inside a ridge, or two ridges side by side, or however you might describe this. There are big boulders that seem to have rolled off this thing. This is about two kilometers wide. So what's that, a mile and a half or so wide. Some of these go for a thousand kilometers across the surface of Europa. Scientists are still arguing today how these things formed. We don't really understand it, but we have some good ideas, ideas that are still being debated. <laughs> um, here's a set of models of possible ways these ridges might have formed. Maybe some, some stuff spewed up from the ocean along fractures, or maybe the squeezing from the tides squeezes stuff up to the surface, or maybe there's compression. Well, the model I believe most is the one in the, the big one up in the center there, that says that what happened is that Europa's surface cracks from these tides that we talked about, and once it's cracked, then these stresses that are rotating around and changing during the day can cause each side of the fracture to move back and forth during the course of Europa's orbit, during the course of Europa's day. And like rubbing your hands together, if you do this for a while, your hands get warm. It doesn't take too long before your hands get warm. And in the same way, if Europa's ice plates are rubbing back and forth against one another, they'll heat up along the boundary, along the fracture. Warm ice will rise, it's less dense than cold ice, and push up the surface above it into one of these ridges. It sounds a little convoluted, 
But this way, the ridges themselves are part of our manifestation of Europa's tides and actually, therefore, of its ocean. So Europa has this bizarre geology because the ocean is essentially manifest at the surface. The surface is telling us, is, is behaving strangely because it's being deformed by the tides in turn because there's an ocean down there. Oh, this is one other. It's the LA model for how Europa's ridges form. We'll, we'll get to the spots in just a little while. Really rest stops. Arthur C. Clarke loved this picture, not because of this, this I did, but, but because of this, he was fascinated by this one crack that is just perfectly straight and on and on. He, he thought we should go look for the monoliths. 